And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at a little game called Mindbug. Now, Mindbug is, well, this is first contact, so this is a ready-to-play strategy card game, it says on here, for two players. And it's the first, I think, in a series, there will be other Mindbug games that are out there. Now, there is a group of four designers who put Mindbug together, uh, Christian Kudal, Marvin Hegan, Scath Elias, and Richard Garfield. And with all due respect to the other three gentlemen, who I'm assuming are fantastic designers, Richard Garfield's name carries some weight. He designed, well, Magic the Gathering, Robo Rally, King of Tokyo. And Magic the Gathering especially is where people might think, well, what is this? And this has a game where you have creatures that you're deploying and attacking each other. But it's really small, and it's called Mindbug for a reason. I'll show you. In Mindbug, each player is going to get two Mindbug cards and place them face up in front of them. There is a deck of 48 cards. You're going to shuffle this and each player is going to get their own separate deck of 10 cards. They're going to shuffle this deck and they're going to draw five cards into their hand. Now as you draw these cards in your hand, they're going to have various powers. There's a name, so this is a Tusk Extorter. Wow, that's like a tongue twister. And they have a power of eight and then a special ability down there below them. So once each player has a handful of five cards, the game begins. Now players are attacking the other player, trying to make their life go down to zero. Each player has three life. And you can use three cards from the deck to keep track of your life. I find that sometimes a little confusing. So we'll just use this giant die that I have to keep track of your life. And you win when your opponent's life turns to zero. Now, on your turn, a player has an option. Uh, you have two options. One of those options is play a card from your hand. So maybe I want to play these urchin hurlers in front of me. So I just play that on a table in front of me. Now, when you play a card, if there is a card on it, if there's any ability on it that says play, like, for example, this poisonous axolotl healer, here says when you play it, gain two life points. That will happen. But before that happens, your opponent has to decide whether they're going to use one of their two mind bugs. So if I play this, my opponent could say, I'm using a mind bug. Whoop, that's out of the game. And instead of me getting the urchin hurler, they now have the urchin hurler. And if there was a play effect on the card, then they will get to do that play effect instead. So if I had played the Compost Dragon, instead of me playing a card from my discard pile, my opponent would get to play a card from their discard pile. If my opponent does use a Mind Bug and steals it, then I get another turn. So I might say, well, I would like to now play Shield Bugs. And my opponent might allow me to do that. You can do this twice per game, where you can use one of your Mind Bugs to steal the card that your opponent plays. The other thing that you can do, instead of playing a card from your hand, is to attack your opponent. If they do nothing, you simply will land a blow on them, and it will drop their life points down by one. But they might defend it with one of their creatures. If they do so, the creatures will fight each other, and the higher one defeats the lower one, which is discarded. Now, in this particular case, that might not happen, because there is a keyword here that says tough. And tough means that you, it takes you two hits before you're discarded. There's a few other words on the keywords on the cards. There's hunter, for example, which means when you attack the opponent, you can pick which of their creatures blocks it. So if they have a creature that they're not blocking with, but you want them to to kill it, you would use a card with hunter. Other keywords are poisonous. When a poisonous creature fights somebody, it doesn't matter who's higher. The poisonous creature is going to kill the other person. Sneaky can only be blocked by other sneaky creatures. And Frenzy gets to make an extra attack. Uh, there's extra things on them. There's combos, Frenzy and Tough, Sneaky and Poisonous. This has, cannot be blocked by creatures with power six or less, the Bee Bear. And the cards go all the way up to 10, the biggest creature, the Gorillion. And there's all kinds of special abilities. There's a few duplicates of some of them that are in here. But you can see there's just all kinds of variations. But there's only a few keywords, so I don't find it to be that difficult to remember what they do. 
Now, this is not a high quality game. It comes in a small tuck box. I'm not a huge fan of tuck boxes, but it does make this pretty easy to carry around. And as you've seen, the artwork on this is really fun. I mean, the, like I said, the quality, the cards are okay. But it's really easy to figure out what everything does. It's fun to see the giraffe dial. I would run from a giraffe dial, although it's not nearly as scary, I guess, as a uh, an alley raff. I don't know. Maybe I'm being weird here. And that's weirdness that's in these. You know, when you have something like the goblin werewolf. But like I said, there's only, I think, five keywords or a few of them, and they're all on the back. And then there's different triggers when you play something, when you attack something, and when it's defeated. So the game is not really that complex, and after you play this a few times, you're going to have pretty much most of the cards memorized and how they work. But realize that's what you're getting, simply a deck of 48 cards and four mind bugs, all which fit in this. Again, you can use any die or counters to keep track of your life or the cards themselves. Well, there you have it. Mind bug. Very simple. Now, I've played this game several times now because it's really intriguing to me. I think we might have even played this live in our We'll Play It Live week. Uh, mind bug, it feels like a microcosm of Magic the Gathering. There's no other way to explain it. It's as if someone said, I want to play Magic the Gathering, but without all the price point, with just one deck of cards, and that takes like five to ten minutes. Maybe it might take 15 minutes, but this is a very short game. It is all, I mean, it has a lot of things that are the same. Sneaky is the same as flying in Magic the Gathering. Poisonous is the same as, well, yeah, it's the same thing in Magic the Gathering. So there's a lot of these terminologies, but what makes this game different are those two mind bugs. I mean, think about it. You have 10 cards out of 48, range from 1 to 10. I feel like they're fairly balanced, you know, I'm assuming that some might be better than others, but you need to know in this game, when do you play that mind bug? When do you steal from your opponent? And you know your opponent can steal from you twice, so that first card you play, are you gonna let them take it? I don't know. So sneaky here seems pretty powerful. You get a sneaky card out there, I just need to get that guy through a couple times. If you don't have anything sneaky to block, phew, hunters will take out the sneaky people. And there are other cards that will kill things when you play them, special abilities. But are they even in this game? So on turn one, my opponent plays a sneaky creature. I should steal it, right? I feel like I should. And that little tension on that one major decision is pretty impressive. Because it comes down to one big giant who done it. What card did I play? And will the other person play a mind bug? And you're sitting there looking at the other person, just bluffing, because I'm gonna play a card down. And you know what? The attacking and the defending and all that stuff is kind of the framework that all of that is there, and you do that, and you block, and you take damage and all, but it all comes down to which card and when do I play it? You know your five cards you have, which is half of all you're gonna have over the course of that game. You have 10 cards that you possibly could play, except two of them will be stolen by your opponent, and you will have two that you steal from your opponent. When to do that, it's so interesting. Now, I'll say this. I do wonder how, you know, like I said, I played this multiple times, and each time I played it felt different, and each time I'm like, hmm, how am I going to play these cards back and forth? Um, I wonder the long, long-term replayability of this, but then again, this is the size of the game. So this works. It's small, I can pull it out. I suspect Magic players will like this. Now they will all loudly proclaim Magic's better. Yes, but you've spent several hundred thousands of dollars on that. This is a mere small package. So it's like a micro Magic. Now it's not just Magic, there's that whole bluffing ordeal. And if you don't like Magic, you still might like this one. This is not going to be everyone's cup of tea, although I suspect for a lot of people, you're going to need to play it more than once to kind of d determine where you land on this. The first time you play it, you might just get completely suckered. But because it's so quickly, who cares? You, you beat me. Let's shuffle up and play again. And yes, there's luck in the cards you draw. But the thing is, it's not 100% luck, even remotely. Because if your opponent has better cards than you, you steal them. And you say, well, that's not the case here. The case is I have two great cards, and I played them, my opponent stole them. 
So then play your less big ones first. Try to feel them out. Try to get them to steal something. It's neat. It's interesting, and it's unique. I keep calling it a magic light game, and it is to some degree, but it has a very different feel to it. So I'm pretty impressed with it. Mind bug first content. I'm Tom Basil. We'll see you next time. Dice Tower Judgment approved.